All right, guys, in this week's video, we're going to be talking about bite work with puppies. I have plenty of videos on the topic of bite work, and I have a lot of videos on the topic of puppies. And I also have a couple of videos on the topic of bite work with puppies. In this video, I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm going to show you some video of the recent addition to our family. It's my wife's dog, Vlad. It's a Belgian Malinois. He was bred for protection work and he's already showing some of the traits that allow us to make this video because a lot of you guys are going to have dogs like this. The thing to remember about these working dogs is they're not pets. Very important to always remember that. The moment you think that they are just like your average pet dog, very low drive dog that occasionally will get in trouble as a puppy, you will get it completely wrong. These dogs are constantly looking for things to put their mouths on. They're constantly looking for trouble and they're constantly looking for opportunities to chase and do something that your average owner would find incredibly inappropriate. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is bite work. If you got this puppy for bite work and this puppy is showing traits that it wants to use his mouth and it is obviously a working dog. One of the best things you could do for these working dogs is give them a job, especially if they want to put their mouths on things. Now they're telling you they would probably enjoy something related to bite work. Then it is something that could be very beneficial for your dog, for your Malinois. So in terms of bite work, what can you do? You can join a club, but the problem is a lot of clubs are not really open. A lot of clubs are full. The other thing you could do is you could pay somebody for private lessons. You could pay somebody to do some bite work with your puppy, somebody who knows what they're doing, and then you could go that route. Also, there is the do it at home route, which is you do some of that bite work. There is a whole school of thought when it comes to that, where people believe that doing bite work with your own dog is a terrible idea and this video is certainly not to address that i've made videos on that i've made podcast episodes on that if you decided to do some of your own bite work some of your own grip work it's something that it can be done sometimes you need a little bit of help but it certainly is doable the way i look at it is if i do a little bit of bite work with my puppy i'm not really teaching him to bite me i'm not really having him bite my skin my hands my ankles what i'm doing is i'm playing a very directed game i'm pretty much playing tug with my dog it's no different than me playing tug with any other dog this is just a game that facilitates the use of their mouth especially when all they want to do is put their mouths on things. Now I can tell them with this game, you can, and it is acceptable, it is encouraged for you to put your mouth on this thing. When it comes to bite work for puppies, there is probably several different ways that you could approach this. So I want to tell you how I have done the bite work myself. Again, I have videos that you can check out on this topic that I've already made. I will put the links below so you can check them out whenever you want. But let's go over that again. When I have a very young, young puppy, when she got it, it was barely eight weeks and she's had it already for a couple of weeks now. So at that age, I'm not gonna get a sleeve. I'm not gonna get a, a big sleeve or I'm not gonna attempt to put the puppy on a bite suit. You have to look at a few very important things about this puppy that will determine your style of playing with this puppy. One is the size of your puppy. Some puppies are a little bit smaller, right? So the size of the toy or the size of the tug that I'm going to use for that small Malinois, that small working dog, is going to be a little bit different than the size of a Malinois that is a little bit larger. I'm also going to look at the maturity level of the puppy. Some puppies at seven weeks of age, you put them on the ground and they're ready to go. They're ready to bite the biggest thing that they could possibly fit in their mouth. And then you have some puppies that mentally are not quite there yet. They need a little bit of coaxing. They need a little bit of developing. It doesn't mean that they're awful dogs. It just means that mentally they're not ready to play that game to the same capacity that the other puppy is. The other thing to keep in mind is 
the physical structure of the puppy, the anatomical structure of the puppy. Here's what I mean by that. Some puppies have a, a naturally small snout, have naturally a small skull, naturally small mouth. Now, again, this is going to influence the type of tug I'm gonna use on that puppy and the style of playing that I'm gonna use on this puppy. Some puppies have a naturally bigger, fuller uh, skull, a longer snout. So then the size of the tug on this puppy can vary depending on that. Now I'm gonna show you some of the materials that I like to use for puppy bite work. And I'm gonna kinda of go over why I use these particular materials. Go to DrMingusMyPassion.com for the rest of that video. You're going to go to this website and you're going to be able to find it in the Malino course or the virtual training membership. Virtual training membership is a monthly subscription where you get access to exclusive content. Once you hit that, it's going to take you to this page where you can have access to the exclusive membership sites. You can also find it in the Malino course. The Malino course is just a one course. You get full access to that course and all the videos in that course. And it's all on do's and don'ts of basically having a Malinois for the first time. So if you're new or if you're seasoned with this, this can be very helpful. That video, the rest of that video is going to be in these two areas.